with Southern Regime. Today, we're going to be touching on garnishments, and we're speaking to Amir. He's a master student in exclusive equity, which is a little bit different from what I usually talk about, which is um, the status as a consumer. Um, he's educated me on how this is actually a, a more powerful uh, role than actually being the consumer. So we're going to listen. I'm going to ask him some questions. We're going to learn as much as possible. So how are you today? I'm doing pretty good, pretty good. Busy day, but, you know, we're making it. Yeah, I know we've been trying to do this for like a couple months and uh, both our schedules finally kind of worked out. So I'm excited to talk to you about this. Um, so like I, like I mentioned, I want the viewers to understand there is a difference from being a consumer and being in a role of equity. So can you kind of explain exclusive equity? So, all right. So I come from a position of being a private American versus a consumer. So the private American is more so on the private side of things and the consumer deals more so on the public side of things. So exclusive equity, it actually came about because uh, common law was too harsh. Hmm. So equity is more of like the the spirit of the law. So when common law is too harsh and being unfair, then if you express equity, it comes to fulfill the law. It comes to, what should I say, uh, make things fair, make things just. Okay. So that's that's pretty much what exclusive equity is about. Okay, so uh, one of the questions, one of obviously the reason I brought you on is because I wanted to talk to you about um, the garnishment, garnishments and the garnishment process. So I get emails multiple times a week saying, "Hey, I got a garnishment. How do I stop it? Or what can I do? Or what options do I have?" And I know usually um, you like serve papers or documents, or sometimes people say it's a surprise. I know they're supposed to go through some kind of legal. Um, process, but um, people are experiencing garnishments a lot more now, probably because we're through COVID. So companies are basically attacking anybody they can. Um, so I guess my question, my first question is, is it possible to stop a garnishment? And how far can you get into a garnishment before you can stop it? So yeah, it's possible. It's definitely possible to stop a garnishment at, at any point in time. Um, obviously, it's way easier to do it um, before it actually starts versus, you know, after the fact. Um, and so under exclusive equity, I like to express surety ship, more specifically, uh, equitable subrogation. So surety ship, it involves um, subrogation contribution, substitution, and exoneration. And so with being a private American, you understand that, well, being a private American and expressing suretyship, you understand that the, uh, the principal debtor or somebody that is primarily responsible is actually the consumer, or you can say actually is the, the birth certificate the driver's license, the social security card, those those instruments, those credentials, that makes up what people um, know as, you can say, the straw man or the principal debtor or the person. If you had anybody ever say to you, do you have something on your person? That's what they're referring to. And so that's who is primarily responsible for all the charges, all the obligations. Now, being a private American, you are secondarily responsible. That means you're the implied surety or you're the co-surety or you can say you're the, like the co-signer. So you, it shouldn't be on you to begin with to uh, be responsible for those debts. Right, but obviously we're born into this. So, you know, so like I say, there are always, the principal debtor, he's always responsible, right? But, you know, if if they say, hey, if they're talking to your person, they say, hey, we're coming to get your car, you know, that means your car. Yeah. So that's how you know you're the implied surety. 
you know, for the birth certificate uh, for the person. So that's how, you know, you know, you're secondarily uh, responsible or you're the co-signer. So um, I guess if I'm if I'm at work or something and then I get served papers, they say um, I, my wages are about to be garnished. Like what are like one or two steps that I should take? Like as soon as I receive those documents. Hey guys, this is Kalia with Southern Regime. If you're a small business owner and you are in need of funding for your business, we have the perfect program for you. We're also going to throw in a pretty big bonus of fixing your personal credit for free. Now, why are we doing that? One, because if you are a newer business, your personal profile might come into play. We want to make sure your personal and your business profile are really strong. So if your business needs an additional $50,000, $100,000, maybe $200,000, this is going to be an ideal program for you. Hit the link in the bio. So if you're studying suretyship, like what I would do in this situation, I would immediately tender a special deposit. Now, a lot of people are probably going to have the question, like, what is that? Um, now, that, that is a tad bit more advanced, but it's similar to making a payment, but it is not the same thing. But without going too deep, without, you know, going down the rabbit hole and splitting the hairs right now. It's like making a payment. Uh, making a payment against the garnishment ship? Or, I mean, again, oh. Yeah, to, okay. yeah to, to balance the ledger. So, okay, so from a, from a consumer law standpoint, um, I guess the argument that is similar to what you're saying would be using, will be leaning on 18 USC 8, right? Because it's saying all debts are already covered. So what you're saying is... So I'm just using something tangible. Yeah. I can just express it, yeah. But I'm just, I just like to use something tangible so that they understand what's going on because people are used to giving money, receiving money, yeah. you know what I mean? So I just like using something tangible. But I could, yeah, I can just express the relationship because yeah, all debts are already covered. Yeah. So is it possible? And I get this question all the time because um, I did a video a while back about uh, down payments with cars. Um, and so now a lot of the emails that come in regarding that video are like, hey, um, can I still go get my money back? Can I still get my down payment? So in this situation, if you've completed or you're already in in the garnishment process, is it possible to go back and like get the money back that was garnished? Or can you not do that because you didn't have the status at that time? Like, let's say you're just learning this information, but your wages were were garnished, but that process just ended. Can you go back or is that not an option? Yeah, you can go back. Uh, so equity, you can go a million years in the future, a million years in the past. That's what equity allows. Um, past. That's what equity allows. Um, now, that's not saying it won't be hard for you because in equity, it's like it looks to what was your intent and purpose when you started this? And obviously, if you don't know about equity or you know, know about shorty shit, then you probably weren't expressing that. So then you look like you didn't know what you were doing and everything is warranted. However, like I said, equity is, you know, can go a million years um, in the past. And it's all about correcting your mistakes. Mm -hmm. So you can go back and do amendments and correct your state, uh, your mistakes. Basically, yeah. hey, I made a mistake here. I need to make an amendment. This is what should have been done. Um, I'm still owed my equity. The fair thing would be to do let me get what's rightfully mine. And so all of, so technically the, um, the money that you pay, like all the securities, which that will be included is held in trust for the beneficiary. Always. So, so in suretyship, that would mean like, that would mean 
how should I put it? So when you're expressing suretyship, you're making that payment, you're doing so as you know, somebody secondarily liable. So when you do that, that means you need to be made whole because you're the only one, you're you're the only one that's out of something at this point. Think about this is like the 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 example I like to use is if me and you go to the car lot, right? Let's say you're primarily responsible, which means you're going to sign first. I'm the co-signer. I'm secondarily responsible, which means I'm the implied surety. I'm the surety. So you go make the payment. You know, we both go to the car lot. You get the car. You sign first. I sign second. Boom, we drive away. Now, we obviously know paperwork came with that and a title came with that, right? Typically, the creditor is going to hold all that. Now, that paperwork and everything, that's the securities. That's the equity. It's held in trust, although people don't know that, but it is. It's held in trust. So now let's say whatever happened, fell on hard times where COVID, another COVID happened or whatever, you can make the payment. So now I come in and I pay off the entire thing. So now you have the car. They got their money, but now I'm out of something, right? Yeah. But those securities are mine. Gotcha. So that is substitution. I step into the shoes of the creditor as the surety. I'm, I don't become the creditor, but I step in the shoes of the creditor. The creditor debtor is a public relationship. So how do you make the transition from like a consumer to surety? Um, well, it's going to, you have to start understanding about uh, the private, the private side of things, being a, a private American, understanding jurisdiction. Um, you're going to have to go back into history and start to understand, you know, okay, so like, we all agree that it seems the government is the ultimate power, right? But we all agree that people have to make the government, right? There's no government. People without, vote, yeah. Right, That's so that's how it's supposed to go, right? So we have just, you know, been tricked. But the reality of it is, yeah, the people are have the real power, I should say. I don't want to get in, I don't want to say the wrong words and have people, you know, start thinking otherwise, but the, the people have the real power. It's just we have been tricked into a public position instead of remaining private. Um, yeah, I mean, and again, like from a consumer law standpoint, people don't understand, if you don't understand, regardless if it's consumer law or not, like if people don't understand the power that they have, um, which is often that environment is created, you know, on purpose to make right. you small, to make you not think, to make you not question certain things. Um, but if you don't know you have that power, obviously you're not going to be able to execute it or ask questions about it. Although, um, I think we see now when people do that, even from like a community standpoint or you're standing up against something that's wrong, uh, you know, you're often hushed or disappear or like crazy things uh, happen to people um, because they need to limit the amount of information that you know or that you have access to. So, yeah, makes sense. 100% true. So, I guess I'm wondering now, like from the surety standpoint, like what do your actual documents look like? So like if does your passport look the same? Like do any um identification items so, look the same? When you start doing things like this, like so I'm more about controlling my signature and controlling, you know, my name and status, right? Because I would like that's what truly matters. So I can, I don't have a problem getting, you know, these licenses, passport and all that. It's going to look the same. However, the substance is different. Like my status in their system is different. The mode and the mode substance or like behind my name is, is different than that of a U.S. citizen. 
a U.S. citizen is like it's like a military entity, a military construct, a government construct. Hmm. Private American is way different. So, uh, I mean, I guess to steer back into garnishment from if your status is different, how does this process protect you? So how does like surety ship protect you from garnishment or can surety ship protect you from debt collectors? Obviously, you can still go to court and obviously there's certain things. I don't mean to say obvious because it may not be, but there are certain things that you can say or you can communicate to a judge or whatever hierarchy you need to speak to, how is it better? Like how, how does it create a greater status to protect you in these situations? Well, first off, I do think, all right. So a lot of people are like weary of this because they think it's like sovereign citizen. They see like a whole lot of, obviously we see the videos on social media, people get jammed up in court and all that. Right. I a hundred percent. I get it. I get it. I I get it. However, I sleep good at night because I study exclusive equity. It's like God conscious. It's it's like God's law. So it's like you don't get locked up expressing God. You know what I mean? Like expressing God's law. Like I don't. I don't really have any risk. Like if you committed a crime, then yeah, you have that risk. But as far as like expressing yourself yeah i don't really have like that risk you know what i mean like whereas you know people like okay the biggest thing is you'll see people trying to do liens and stuff like that like i don't do liens on like public officials because people get jammed up for that but i'm still expressing trust law i'm still expressing equity it's the difference so I don't have to worry about, you know, um, yeah, just having that risk. I think that's the that's the biggest thing um, as far as protection. And then it's like when you start expressing equity and you change the mode from military to equity, then the judge becomes your advocate. You want the judge to be your friend. However, you come in there as a belligerent a U.S. citizen, an enemy under Trading with the Enemy Act, under the War Powers Act, um, under emergency banking, mm -hmm. then, you know, and you come in there trying to lean a judge or you make a judge a trustee, that's not what you want. This is all belligerent activity, and you're not going to get relief like that. You're not going to get grace. You're going to stay arguing at law like lawyers do, like consumers do. So, We're here um, to settle the case. so like yourself and your team obviously help, um, help people in various situations, right? So like not just garnishment. Um, I think you, I know, well, you've recommended, um, books and information regarding trust to me, um, but also like some criminal stuff, like what are what are some of the things that you all uh, work with people on uh, that fall under this category? Um, so mostly like yeah, debt, uh, like civil debt and obli obligations. Definitely traffic court. Like traffic court is a hundred percent surety shit. I don't care what anybody says. I have probably the most experience in traffic court, and it's 100% surety ship jurisdiction. Um, but like nonviolent, you know, misdemeanors, um, you know, it's, it's, it's other cases that, you know, that we've been able to, to beat that, you know, are worse, but we just kind of keep those tucked. So uh, the people that come to you, do they have to move into a surety, uh, surety status or, do they not have to do that? Well, you're already implied surety. The thing is, it's like we we are the grantor's beneficiaries. So we're entitled to everything, right? All the equity. It's just in the public, they don't see you as a beneficiary. And it's like, 
you're you're the implied surety. They're making you surety for someone, right? But we don't want it. The Bible says not to stand as surety. So we don't ever want to be sure it is just we can't help it. That that's why it's implied surety. So to not stand as a surety anymore, we need to express our rights as a surety so that we can stand in the shoes of the creditor. Now we control the situation. Then we can we basically can settle settle the case. So you got to understand it's like. If you got a charge, if you got a charge for 500, right? So then we're going to come in and express surety ship. So we attended special deposit. The creditor receives that. So now um, we're entitled, we're going to express equitable subrogation. So that means we get to equitable subrogation and substitution as it relates to the, um, to the transaction. So now it's a step in the shoes of the creditor. And then the creditor becomes the trustee. The trustee now has to settle the trust. That's what the trustee does. That's part of that's part of his duty. So we're saying, hey, we're giving him instructions on what to do. Um and do they need to, I mean, so you're basically like breaking it down. So like maybe they know what to say in court or they know what letter to write or. Yeah. So we yeah, like, we're basically expressing the whole relationship and like, once you understand it, yeah, you can write it on. We basically equity is about dealing with people like in persona. So you go up to the court or get on the phone and call them. You basically need to give them notice. Give them yeah. notice of what's going on, you know, courtesy. Yeah. That note, I mean, from a garnishment standpoint, that notice is to the debt collector or like whatever company that is, or is that to the courts? That's going to be to to both. So the action is to the to the creditor, right? You're going to tender a special deposit to the creditor. But you're going to give notice to the creditor and to the the judge because what you're doing is private. They are all on the public side. But the judge understands the private side because he's, you know, the um, he understands the public and private side basically. So you got to deal with him and his private on, on the private side, but on the public side, it's gonna be a whole different. It's gonna be a whole different show. Hmm. Until you, in the lower courts, until you know if you express equity, then you might be able to get relief. However then limited in what they can do. So you need to go to a higher court to get relief if you don't get it in the lower courts. So what do you think are some mistakes people make from uh, once they receive a garnishment? Like what, like what should they be doing to like move this they process? Don't, they don't pay attention to it. They just, a lot of times they just let it go figure they'll deal with it later or figure they'll never, you know, the company won't catch up with them. Um, uh, but you, I mean, it's like anything else. You got to fight, fight for yourself, fight for your rights. If somebody back in the corner, you ain't got no choice. You know, somebody coming after you, you don't have no, you know, you don't really have a choice unless you got the money. You can go pay a lawyer or hire security to help you out. You know what I mean? So it's like, you have to, you need to uh, execute immediately, whether that be doing an affidavit of truth or, you know, or like we like to say, testimony under God. Um, like you, you got to start fighting back immediately, immediately. Don't waste any time because equity aids people, um, you know, that are vigilant. I um I mean I definitely when I'm talking to some of my clients they'll be like well they never send me anything and I'm just like I mean it's a when the court is involved usually I mean when garnishments you're served I'm sure there are like some shady companies out there that would try to do some nonsense and get away with it really because they think people will get the letters and throw them away or they'll just disregard them but um I do agree 
it's super important to pay attention to all the documents that you receive. Read everything. Like people get it and they open it and they like, I ain't got the money. And then they just throw it away. And it's like, you're putting you know yourself in a more difficult situation. Yeah. And, and they know that's going to happen. We're under, we're, we're under a million presumptions, you know, and have been for hundreds of years. You know what I mean? So it's like, what what will make me think any anything different? Yeah, I'm gonna test you. I keep testing you, but like the Bible said anyway, it's like you're gonna be tested three times. You know what I mean? At least. So it's like it it just makes sense to me. We're under the presumption, so why wouldn't they test? Like if 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 for the last twenty years somebody came up to me every day with twenty dollars, and uh, tomorrow am I supposed to think he's not coming? Yeah. Right. So it's like we're under the presumption. So they're going to test you. So if you're if you just get that that garnishment notice and you're like, I ain't got the money or whatever, they'll never catch up with me. You just throw it to the side. OK. That's what they expect. And next thing you know, you're going to be getting garnished. Right. I've actually worked in garnishment department for student loans. So oh. I've literally been on the phone with people typing in their information like, oh, you're not going to pay? You're not going to tell me any information? I, I might already know it. And typing it into the system, about to garnish you here in the next two weeks or, you know, in the next 30 days. So since I guess you've been in that side, um, as far as garnishments go, what? So, because, I mean, I, I haven't experienced the garnishment, but obviously I talk to people all the time. They're like, hey, I'm in this situation. How do I get out? Or... How can I stop it? But um, as far as the execution of the garnishment, are they just hitting all that person's bank accounts? Are they freezing it? Are they just going through their, usually go through their employer to to get those funds? Like, what are what's that approach like? So, yeah, typically it's the employer. That's the number one. Uh, if they can't get that or and they'll do your uh yeah your bank accounts those are the probably the the, the two most uh big ones definitely the employer because it's like you know if the employer doesn't uh doesn't comply then they're held personally responsible so it's just like all right if you're not you know if you're not doing what you're supposed to do then you're gonna pay so mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, is there anything else you want to share uh, as far as garnishments that could help the people that are watching? I mean, I definitely want you to share your social media and everything, but just if they're hit with a garnishment, what maybe they should do, what they should look out for? Uh, so I would definitely say that um, I, I think so if you're gonna if you're gonna express if you're gonna start studying suretyship, then I would say make sure that you're up on it, um, you understand it fully. Make sure that you act very swift, and don't be afraid to express it in open court. So what should they be reading, or what should they be researching? So I would say. Uh, Law of Subrogation by Henry Sheldon. I like to tell people Suits in, in Chancery by Henry Gibson. Um, and you can look up Professor John Pomeroy, P-O-M-E-R-O-Y. You can look up, uh, you can get any of those, all of their books and read them but specifically for suretyship it would be um, a law of subrogation by henry sheldon okay uh can you share your social media so people know where to find you if they have more questions about this or concerns or um i think you're about to do a mentorship or something like that maybe they want to sign up for that program yeah so we have uh matisse academy is launching here in the next couple of weeks um my instagram is amir a-m-y-r 
underscore law, L A W. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Amir Sama L. Sama is S A M A H. And um, those are primarily the two uh, platforms I'm on, especially like Instagram. Okay. And, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for today. Like you said, I know we've been trying to do this for a couple months and both our schedules have been kind of hectic. But, I was um, able to put it together. Yeah. Um, I hope the viewers learned something here today. Again, if you have questions, uh, definitely drop them at the bottom. I will forward them to Amir, but I'll also share his contact information at the bottom so you guys can uh, go directly to him and ask him questions. But thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Peace.